Girls of Sales. So today we have with us Chitra Singh. Chitra Singh is a sales mentor and inspirer, community nurturer and lifelong learner with three decades of expertise in building and scaling inspired sales team. We are very honored to have you with us today and thank you for being a part of Navadurgas of Seal. How are you um, feeling? Thank you so much. I'm feeling really excited and really happy that you've invited me here. It's a real honor and I'm looking forward to talking to you. Yeah, that's great. So uh, as you as you are a sales mentor and inspire, inspirer too, so I just want to know more about it. Right. So the name itself tells you what is it that I do. Uh, I am the founder and chief mentor at Sales Women Tree, which is India's first and only community inspiring women to succeed at selling. Mm -hmm. And the problems we are trying to address through this community is that there are very, very few women who choose sales as a career. And out of those who choose really very, very few, less than 10% remain to reach leadership positions. And that is why we see so few women sales leaders. Right. And the third problem we are trying to address is, of course, uh, that even as a business owner or an entrepreneur or a solopreneur, a consultant, coach, women are often hesitant to get into selling because they feel it's a very uh, pushy yeah. profession, very aggressive, male dominated. Because of all these stereotypes surrounding it, even women in business hesitate to get into sales. To address right. all these problems and misconceptions regarding sales is why I started this community. And having been a lifelong salesperson myself, I love selling. And that is what I want to pass on to other women. The message that selling is not really difficult if you have self-belief and confidence. So the purpose of my community is to enable 1 million women to sell with confidence. And right. confidence is the key to being successful in sales is what I believe. That's great. That's great. Lovely to hear from you that. Uh, so you. how did you get into sales? Right. So it was like a default career choice. I would not say I took a very, uh, uh, took a decision to join sales. Uh, it was more when uh, just out of fresh out of graduation, I applied for a job at Johnson and Johnson. And that was my first exposure to sales. And this was more than 30 years back that I joined Johnson and Johnson. And out of more than 1,000 people who applied, I got, um, I got selected and went in as a medical representative. And as you know, that is one of the most difficult jobs. That was my initiation into sales. But I loved it. And wading through Mumbai rains uh, in the rainy season, of course, making calls at uh, sometimes 9, 9.30 p.m. in the night because my list of doctors were some of the most famous people, uh, famous doctors in Mumbai. And meeting them at 9 p.m., facing these challenges, traveling by the locals, and so on. That was my first foray into selling. But that, right. that started my lifelong passion and love for sales because I realized that sales is a way in which we can help people, we can add value, and we can really make a difference to people's lives. Right. And that's how I got into it. Right. So, uh, you know, there have been a very few women in top positions in sales. Why? Right. So good, good, very good question. We touched upon it briefly when I first talked about it, that very few women proactively choose sales careers and even fewer remain in sales careers to reach the top. And there are many, many reasons for this uh, stereotypes, gender biases, the belief that sales is too aggressive a profession, full of pressure, target, too much traveling, safety issues. Right. There are lots of concerns amongst this. And most important, I think, is the fact that women feel we have to do uh, after office socializing, networking with the boys club, so-called, because there are so many boys in sales. And this intimidates them. So it kind of puts them off from choosing a career in sales. But more than everything else, I think the barrier inside us that we believe that we cannot sell. We are afraid of going out there and selling. And this fear of rejection, this fear of failure limits us into choosing a career in sales. Due to all these reasons, um, I do think that the number of women is few. At entry level, there are 40% women who choose sales as a career. But it becomes fewer and fewer. By the time you reach the leadership positions, it's less than 10%. And that's a problem we are attempting to change. By positioning sales as a career of pride and choice for young women today. And by talking about the many benefits of selling, everyone knows about the cons of selling. 
Okay. Or the disadvantage, but not many, very many highlight the benefits of selling, which means it's a high visibility, high revenue generating uh, role. It's an opportunity to travel, to meet people, to see the world, and more importantly, contribute where it matters to the organization. So your progress in your career is accelerated when you contribute in a highly visible position. Your promotion and acceleration is much faster in the organization and not in the least to mention, of course, the fact that you can earn incentives, which are sometimes twice or three times your salary. So the earnings are many, the benefits are many, and they overshadow the disadvantages of sales. Right. Agreed. Uh, so I want to know from you, what was, how was your first sale? Because it is something that, you know, uh, every, everyone, uh, yeah, actually, it was, it was really funny. funny. So what was yours? Funny. It was really funny because I remember again, we are going back to JNJ. It was pouring rain in the rainy season in Mumbai, and I had actually waded through. My clothes were wet, and I was in the hospital. And after JJ Hospital, I had to make a call in the opposite at the opposite side of the road in a chemist called Shah Chemist. Till today, I remember, and I had to reach there at 1 p.m. Right. And um, after finishing the doctor calls for morning, I had to meet the chemist to find out whether he had enough stocks of our products. And I reached uh, the hospital, but I was unable to cross the road because of the water and the fact that it was raining and pouring. I reached there at 1.05 to the chemist instead of 1 o'clock. And we had a journey cycle planned. So my immediate manager knew where I was supposed to be at what point in time because I was supposed to follow the plan. And right. when I reached there, to my horror, he was already there. My boss was waiting for me at the chemist. He didn't say anything. We finished the conversation with the chemist and we came out. Then he asked me, so, so I said, I just stammered and I knew I was late. So he said, so why were you late? So I said, sir, boss, Barish, you know, I did not know what to say. So he told me that, listen, we are not here to make excuses. We are here to make a difference to the customer's life. And the first thing we do is to show up irrespective of the situation or circumstances, we are not here to make excuses. We are here to show up and give our best every single day. And that was the starting point and the biggest lesson I learned in my life that if you value the customer and his or her time, that's when they will give you that value in return. So this was my first um, non-sale, I would call it. It was not really a sale, but it was a lesson I remembered for life. I was, of course, um, successful in J&J because the doctors, the chemists, all of them gave me really good feedback and I was on target. But more important than making the sale or closing the deal, it was the lessons which I learned, which I carry with me till today. So, uh, do you feel, uh, do you have any experience uh, or resistance when you're leading men? And why is it so? We are living in a world where there are uh, people who have biases and who believe in uh, gender uh, stereotypes and gender defined roles and responsibilities. And once they come with those belief systems to work, it becomes a little difficult to address as a woman boss. In fact, again, I will tell you an incident which is, which is very, very uh, comical on one hand, but also taught the other person a lesson which they will remember for life. So uh, there was this person who was reporting to me. Uh, he was regional head, I was national head. And I visited his location, which is Delhi for a sales meeting, customer meetings, and review, team review. And uh, during the team review, he started shouting at one of the persons in his team, saying that, uh, why haven't you done your target? What is it that you're doing the whole day? Are you just wasting your time? Uh, it froze in the middle. Maybe you will have to uh, get Get rid of that. So the question he asked was very interesting to the young boy who was not on target. So he said, Kya kar tha tu whole day? Time waste kar tha ben ke office mein baitha tha kya? That's what he said. So I was silent. The whole room was silent. And then I told all of them, why don't you all leave the room? We will continue the review after five, 10 minutes. I told that young boy also who was getting very nervous because he realized that it was not a comment to make. Right. And I told him, you please leave the room. Come back after five, 10 minutes. And then I was wearing bangles that day. I asked my manager, Ye kya hai in Hindi, uh, what is this? And uh, he said, I'm sorry, ma'am. I said, I did not ask you to say sorry. I just said, Ye kya hai. Then he said, I have learned my lesson. 
I will never again repeat it. And what I told him was that women are the most important people in your life. The woman who held your hand and taught you how to walk, your mother. Yes. She is a woman. The woman who now walks with you through life, your wife is a woman and the woman who walks with you in the office and holds your hand and mentors you and guides you in your career again is a woman so if you respect women and believe that success is not defined by gender and a leader is not defined by their gender but rather by the work they do and their actions if you believe that you will succeed in your career i hope you remember this and then finally he got what i said and till today we are friends until today, he remembers that that first lesson and he says, I have the highest respect for my women managers. So this was one incident, but I dealt with it firmly and confidently and passed on the message in a very dramatic way, more in Bollywood style by saying, Ye kya hai? but it, mm. the message went across. So sometimes you have to deal it, deal with it with humor, sometimes with firmness, but the way, way, way forward is never to confront because often people are shackled by their limiting beliefs. And sometimes they don't, they are not even aware that these are limiting beliefs or stereotypical behavior. And you need to make them aware and then take them forward towards the progressive path. Lovely. I'm, you are a real Durga, I must say. <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't know. You can call Durga or whatever. But I think the fact that we have a responsibility uh, to le towards leaving this world a more equal place for our daughters and sons. That is the responsibility which makes me uh, carry forward this message to yeah. the world. I have a daughter who's 20 years old and I want to leave the world a more equal place for her so that when she goes out to work, she does not face many of these biases and stereotypes. We can never have a perfect world, but at least we can know how to deal with it and we can have the confidence to deal with it. I agree. I agree. So what motivates you to do your best? When I hear stories of uh, women who come back to me and tell me that because of your words or because of your message, I've had the courage to speak up. Often, I think what limits us is that we accept the status quo. We don't, we keep on compromising and therefore we keep on uh, putting our ambitions on the back burner. And often because of uh, uh, fear of uh, not belonging, fear of not being accepted, fear of being judged. We often choose accommodation over ambition, sacrifice over success, compromise over conviction. Right. So instead of choosing our aspirations and our dreams, we choose compromise. And I often tell them that it is in your hands. You need not accept the status quo. You have a voice and you can raise your voice and talk for what you deserve. You can ask for what you deserve and you can negotiate for what you deserve. And the choices you make today will define your future. So make the right choices, which will help you to be the best and to give the best. Yes. And for that, you have to use these two weapons, which I already mentioned, your voices and your choices. Your yes. voices to ask for what you deserve and your choices to redefine your future. When I see that the message I'm passing across is getting across and women continue in their careers or don't leave. There, there's a woman who has a, a five-year-old daughter and she came to me and said that I want to quit because the child is growing up and I, I don't have, uh, I feel very guilty about leaving her at home. So I asked her a simple question that she is a joint responsibility. So parenting is a joint responsibility. So why don't you speak to your husband and both of you together decide and maybe take care from all your ecosystem. You have your mother-in-law, you have your mother. It's not wrong to ask for help from, actually, it's not even help. It's not wrong to ask for support from your immediate family. So talk to them, maybe hire one more uh, nanny, maybe use all the help which you have around you, but don't quit. And finally, she didn't quit because she took this message and she took this advice. When I see that I'm able to make a difference to people's lives, whether it's one, 10, 500, now we are a 500 plus community. And the message which I'm trying to pass on to them, when I see that it really impacts their lives and it is enabling them to continue in their careers, despite the many challenges we face, that is what motivates me and inspires me. And more than motivates, I use the word inspired because obviously my community stands for inspired selling. And I believe that only an inspired person who leads an inspired life can be an inspired seller. So it all starts with the choices we make, which inspire us to be more, do more and dream more. And finally, impact others to do more.
Yes, agreed. Lovely. You know, and one thing that uh, one should stand up for themselves. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because until, until yeah, because unless and until you don't stand up for yourself, then people will take advantage of it. Right. That's right. So that that applies to both men and women. Yeah. So it's not like I am against men or I'm speaking yeah. only for women. But the fact is, overall, our conditioning is such, and socially, right. historically, we've been at a disadvantage. And there are only three E's, uh, which will equalize this world or bring our bring about a more equal world for women, which is education, employment, and equal opportunity. And as long as we get these three E's. I, I think that an equal world is not very far off. Even today, we have a long way to go. Yes, I agree. So what skills are necessary to excel in field? The first thing I think is self-belief and confidence because that's where everything stems from. And like I told you earlier, the biggest barrier is in our own minds. This fear of failure, this fear of rejection, where we feel, what if I fail? What if the customer says no? Uh, what if I don't know what to do? I'm not good enough. I don't know enough. This whole self-limiting behavior is what holds us back from taking positive action towards our goals. And unless we take action, we will always be paralyzed. For example, one example I give to many women is that you can't learn how to swim by standing at the edge of the water and wondering, oh, is it too cold? Is it too deep? Is it too warm? Can I sink? Can I swim? What will happen? No use. It's You have to get into it. And then obviously with confidence, with self-belief, you will be able to reach the other side. Right. So the first, first trait I would feel is self-belief and confidence. The second is that you need to have conviction about the value you're bringing uh, to the table. Third is I feel that you need to have clarity about what success means for you, your own definition of uh, success. And the fourth that you should be coachable. You should be a lifelong learner because you need a mentor or a sponsor, not because you are not capable, but more because their experience and their um, stories will give you that inspiration to move forward so again the four c's which i told you confidence conviction clarity and coachability right and one thing is uh, it's about uh, building relations with your customers absolutely so this is another place where women yeah. uh, struggle because we don't want to invest that time and effort in networking or making connections and we also hesitate to leverage on our connections to ask for referrals to ask for testimonials because we don't want to be seen as uh, pushy we don't want to be seen as salesy because salesy has become a bad word and uh, while it is important to leverage on your collect connections. It is also important to know uh, how to deal with people, with value, with respect, and with, with empathy. So how do you encourage a woman to not give up? So some, most of, many or much of it is storytelling along with me. It's not that I'm doing this alone. There are 30 other women who are equally committed to this cause of um, enabling women to succeed at selling. And this 30 other women, there are few men I would say three or four men and the rest of us are all women mm -hmm. along with me they mentor uh, they coach uh, they take learning sessions we also organize networking meetups in order to provide women with all the skills which are necessary in order to uh, succeed like i mentioned even earlier success is 80 percent mindset and only 20 percent skill set so the skill set we can teach through webinars uh, through boot camps and so on. It is a mindset we work on, the confidence um, and communication, the empathy that we work on in order to enable them to progress and succeed. Right. So uh, do women in sales have a hard time getting promoted? If you see the representation of women itself in the workforce is hardly 20%. So the workforce participation in India is amongst the lowest in the world, sad to say, the world average for workforce representation of women is more than 40%. We are at 20%. So what I'm trying to say is women are underrepresented everywhere in the workforce. It's not only sales. And I'm not, um, though I stand for women in sales, I am not um, talking only for women in sales. I'm here now, I'm talking about all women. We are underrepresented, undervalued, and underestimated. Uh, and that is why I feel all women need to raise their voice and stand up for other women. Because when one woman talks for other women and stands up for other women, all women rise. So women helping each other rise is the most powerful 
way of bringing about transformational change, both in society and in the workplace. As long as we stand together and work towards helping each other to succeed, I think no one can stop progress. Right. I agree. Lovely. So you have seen things happening in front of your eyes and you know you have such a beautiful experience in sales. So what is that one advice you want to give to the new people who are who are you want to come into sales and marketing? The first thing is that if you want to get into sales, it is you should only get into it if you believe that sales is your calling and sales is your purpose. If you think that with sales, you have the ability to transform the customer's world, to make a difference, to add value, to really change their reality and to help them solve their problems. Then sales is the right profession for you. But if you don't believe that, you don't have a calling orientation, then don't get into it. If you're going to view sales only as a job, then you will go from deal to deal, quarter to quarter, and say so you'll get frustrated when you're not on target and so on. Right. Even if you view it as, so there are three kinds of orientation, job, career, and calling orientation. Right. So the people who have a job orientation are just doing it because they want a job and they want money. Those people who have a career or orientation are slightly higher on the ladder because they want to make something out of their lives. They aspire to be successful in their lives. So they will take the actions which are necessary. But the highest is a sense of purpose where sales is your purpose and your calling. And that willingness to serve is what spurs you on every single day, what inspires you every single day to go out and meet customers. Yeah. So if sales is your purpose and calling, choose sales. Otherwise, I think you're in the, in the wrong place. The second is approach sales with the willingness to serve, with a customer orientation and be customer centric. Otherwise, you will always do what is easy for you. Don't do what's easy for you. Do what is right for the customer. So customer centricity is uh, really important. And the third I already talked about many times is value, right? You give value, you receive value. So value in terms of the product you offer, value in terms of uh, the way you treat the customer with respect and empathy, value in terms of what you bring to the table uh, so that it leads to a win-win rather than a win-lose. So these three things, if you keep in mind, I think you can be successful in sales. Wow, I agree. You know, there is so much to learn from you. You know, you, Thank you, so much. Two, you are a true inspirer. And you. you are a, and I am, I know I'm repeating it again, but you are a real Durga. And, you know, thank you so much for uh, being a part of uh, Navadurgas of Sales and making it a huge success for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Always pleasure to talking to another woman. And if I could inspire <laughs> you with my words, I could, I would consider myself honored. I'm great. And I'm sure, and I'm sure uh, all the lovely women out there, once they will watch this video, they will, you know, they will also get inspired and motivated uh, by you. So, I hope some men will watch it too, because we can't progress without them, right? We need allies. 50% yeah. of the population is women, but 50% is men. And yeah. therefore, we need both to work together in, in order to usher in true equality. So I do hope a lot of men, including Ravindra, will watch this and yes, absolutely. That it inspires them too. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. So thank you, thank you so much for thank coming you. here.